So we mentioned uh, some of the dangers of, uh, some of the concerns about large language models. That said, uh, you know, there's been a long running fear of these embodied robots. Uh, why do you think people are afraid <laughs> of uh, legged robots? Yeah, I wanted to show you this. This, So this, this is in the Wall Street Journal. And this is all about chat GPT, right? Mm -hmm. But look at the picture. Yeah. It's a humanoid robot. That's saying I will that's replace That's saying you. that looks scary and it says I'm going to replace you. Yeah. And so the humanoid robot is sort of is the embodiment of this chat GPT tool mm -hmm. that there's reason to be a little bit nervous about how it gets deployed. Yeah. So I'm nervous about that connection. Um it's unfortunate that they chose to use a robot as that embodiment. For as you and I just said, I, there's big differences in in this. But uh, people are afraid because we've been taught to be afraid for over a hundred years. So, you know, the word robot was developed by a playwright named Carol Chapek in 1921, the Czech playwright, Rossum's Universal Robots. And in that first depiction of a robot, the robots took over <laughs> at the end of the story. And, you know, people love to be afraid. And so we've been entertained by these stories for a hundred years. But I, and I think that's as much why people are afraid as anything else, is we've been sort of taught that this is the logical progression through fiction. Um, I think it's fiction. I think uh, what people more and more will realize, just like you said, that the threat like say you have a super intelligent AI embodied in a robot, that's much less threatening because it's visible, it's verifiable, it's right there in physical reality. And we humans know how to deal with physical reality. I think it's much scarier when you have arbitrary scaling of intelligent AI systems in the digital space that they could uh, pretend to be human so a robot, Spot is not going to be pretend, it can pretend it's human all it wants. <laughs> it could tell you, you could put chat GPT on top of it, but you're going to know it's not human because you have a contact with physical reality. And, and you're going to know whether or not it's doing what you asked it to do. Yeah. Like it, it's not going to, like if it, li <laughs> I mean, I'm sure you can start just like a dog uh, lies to you. It's like, I didn't, I wasn't part of tearing up that couch. So Spot can, <laughs> Spot can try to lie that like, you know, it wasn't me that spilled that thing, but. It's, you're going to kind of figure it out eventually. It's but if it happens multiple times, you know. Uh, but I think that humanity has figured out how to make machines safe. Yeah. And there's, you know, the regulatory environments and certification uh, protocols that we've developed in order to figure out how to make machines safe. We don't know we and don't have that experience with software that can be propagated worldwide in an instant. And so I think we needed to develop those protocols and those tools. And so uh, that's work to be done, but I don't think the fear of that and that work should necessarily impede our ability to now get robots out. Because again, I think, I think we can judge when a robot's being safe. So, and again, just like in that image, there's a fear that robots will take our jobs. I just, um, I took a ride, I was in San Francisco, I took a ride in the Waymo vehicles, an autonomous vehicle. And uh, I've, I've done it several times. They're they're doing incredible work over there. Uh, but <laughs> uh, people flicked it off. Oh, really? Off the car. So, <laughs> I mean, th that's a long story of what the psychology of that is. It could be maybe big tech or what. I, I don't know exactly what they're flicking off. Yeah. But there is an element of like these robots are taking our jobs or or irreversibly transforming society such that it will have economic impact and the little guy will be, uh, would lose a lot, would lose their well being. Is there something to be said about um, the fear that robots will take our jobs? You know, at every um, significant technological transformation, uh, there's been fear of, you know, an automation anxiety. Yes. That uh, it's, it's going to have a broader impact than than we expected. And there, there will be, uh, you know, jobs will change. Um, 
sometime in the future, we're going to look back at people who manually unloaded these boxes from trailers and we're going to say, why did we ever do that manually? But there's a lot of people who are doing that job today that it could be Im impacted. Um, but I think the reality is, as I said before, we're going to build the technology so that those very same people can operate it. And so I think there's a pathway to upskilling and operating. Just like, look, we used to farm with hand tools and now we farm with machines and nobody has really regretted that transformation. And I think the same can be said for a lot of manual labor that we're doing today. And on top of that, you know, look, we're, we're entering a new world where, demo, where demographics are gonna have strong impact on economic growth. And the, you know, the advanced, uh, the first world is losing population mm -hmm. quickly. Um, in Europe, they're worried about hiring enough people just to keep the logistics supply chain going. And, you know, part of this is the response to COVID and everybody's sort of think, thinking back what they really want to do with their life. But these jobs are getting harder and harder to fill. And I just, I'm hearing that over and over again. So I think, frankly, this is the right technology at the right time um, where we're going to need some of this work to be done and we're gonna want tools to enhance that productivity. And the scary impact, I think, again, uh, GPT comes to the rescue in terms of being much more terrifying. Uh, <laughs> this, this, <laughs> the scary, scary impact of basically, so I, I'm, a, I guess, a software person, so I program a lot, and the fact that people like me can be easily replaced uh, by GPT, that's going to have a, uh, well, and a lot, you know, anyone who deals with text and you know, writing a draft proposal might be easily done with a chat GPT now. Yeah. Uh, Consultants. Where, where it wasn't before. Journalists. Yeah. Um, everybody is sweating. But on the other hand, you also want it to be right. Yeah. And they don't know how to make it right yet. It, it, but it might make a good starting point for you to iterate. Boy, do I have to talk to you about modern journalism. <laughs> that's another conversation altogether. <laughs> but yes, uh, more right than the average, uh, uh, the, the, the mean journalist, yes. Um, you spearheaded the anti-weaponization letter uh, Boston Dynamics has. Can, can you describe uh, what that letter states and the general uh, topic of the use of robots in war. We uh, authored a letter and then got several leading uh, robotics companies uh, around the world, including you know Unitree in China and um, Agility uh, here in the United States and um, Animal in, in Europe and you know some others to uh, co-sign a letter that said, we won't put weapons on our robots. And part of the motivation there is, you know, as these robots start to become commercially available, you can see videos online of people who've gotten a robot and strapped a gun on it and shown that they can, you know, operate the gun remotely while driving the robot around. And so having a robot that has this level of mobility um, and that can easily be configured in a way that could harm somebody from a remote operator is justifiably a scary thing. And so we felt like it was important to draw a bright line there and say, we're not going to allow this for um, you know, reasons that we think ultimately it's better for the whole industry if it, yes. if it grows in a way where uh, you know, robots are ultimately going to help us all and make our lives more fulfilled and productive, but by goodness, you're gonna to have to trust the technology to let it in. And if, and if you think the robot's gonna harm you, that's gonna, that's gonna harm, impede the growth of that industry. So we thought it was important to, to draw a bright line and, uh, and then publicize that. And, and our plan is to you know, begin to engage with uh, lawmakers and regulators, let's figure out what the rules are going to be around the use of this technology um, and use our position as leaders in this industry and, and technology um, to help force that issue. 
Uh, and so we are, in fact, I have a, I have a policy you know, director at, at my company whose job it is to engage with the public, to enja- engage with uh, interested parties and, and including regulators to, to sort of begin these discussions. Yeah, it's a really important topic, and it's an important topic for people that worry about the impact of robots on our society with uh, autonomous weapon systems. So I'm glad you're sort of leading the way in this. 